Well, if there's anything that definitely soared because of the pandemic, it was the idea for many restaurants and businesses across the country to offer cocktails to go. The New York Restaurant Association surveyed hundreds of folks, and a majority of them want states to keep the takeout and delivery rule, even once life gets back to normal post-COVID. Georgia, for example, one state that has permanently adopted the ordinance, and now others are following suit, a move that industry leaders say will help businesses recover from the incredible economic toll of the pandemic. Joining us now is Georgia representative and restaurant owner Casey Carpenter. Casey, thanks so much for giving us uh, a few minutes tonight. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. As someone who lived in New Orleans uh, for 10 years, nice to see the rest of the country uh, catch up to this uh, to-go cocktail phenomenon. But listen, it has been hugely important. 90,000 restaurants in the U.S. have shut their doors permanently or long-term, just couldn't survive COVID. And alcohol to-go played a big role in how many places got through the last 14 months. Yep, that's correct. I think we two things have occurred. One was, you know, restaurants did everything they could to survive during this time, and obviously losing in-house alcohol sales were uh, were um, was very uh, very difficult because of the margins that are that are in those products. And so you saw that piece, um, and then you also, I think, we've seen that even if as, as we've eased out of the pandemic, that there's been a fundamental shift towards takeout for a lot of people. And so to capture those sales that you otherwise would not have, it's kind of really important for uh, for states to, to follow suit and continue this trend. No, for sure. And just to give some national perspective of this, 20 states already have passed laws to keep uh, to-go cocktails around. 15 more states are considering it. So all said and done, uh, more than half the country may uh, keep this around even as a uh, life gets back uh, to normal. What are you all doing down there in Georgia? What's the rule as we talk tonight? So, yeah, so the rule is if you get an entree to go, then you can get two drinks per entree to go. And then, you know, of course, it's got to be a sealed container and then it's got to be carried in your trunk or um, if you don't have a trunk behind the, the farthest back seat. So um, just to make sure you're not drinking it on your way home and look for the consumer. You know, they may not want to have to go out to the liquor store and buy the different liquors and uh, and and mixers to make the drink that they want that a, that a restaurant makes. So, you know, this allows them to do to do this. So, uh, I think it's a uh, it's a great idea and it's great for the industry. Well, speaking of that, too, in some states and now a battle has erupted because always a battle erupts <laughs> over over issues, and that's restaurants versus liquor stores, because liquor stores are saying, well, hey, you're hurting our business if folks can go to uh, a restaurant and take out a bottle of wine or get a jug of margaritas or, or what have you. How do you kind of uh, deal with those conflicting business interests from those two different industries. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's always a challenge to balance the winners and losers in regulation. But at the end of the day, you know, a lot of our laws do not match up consumer trends, and and we're always behind the eight ball from a from a state and from a nation versus what you know where society is. And so, I think the consumers are at this point, and we've got to get our regulation in, in step with the consumers. And that's that's what the pandemic opened our eyes and and showed us as legislators that we've got to start thinking of outside the box and look towards the future as we start to regulate industries. And at the end of the day, I mean, the pandemic showed people bought liquor. So the liquor stores have done fine through the pandemic. I think that uh, uh, restaurants are the ones that need need a lift. All right. I think every, everyone understands the economic toll uh, uh, certainly here. And there's always a downside. People are worried about underage drinking and how the purchases will be tracked and if people are drinking too much because it's been such a, a dark year. But uh, we're, we're out of time for tonight. But I appreciate you giving us a few minutes. And and I don't want to let you go without asking you if you had a particular favorite to go cocktail that got you through uh, COVID, sir. You don't have yeah, to answer. So we're, but we've ahead. actually yeah, we've actually probably been doing this before I was a legislature, and I've straightened up since then. But uh, we had a, a local Mexican restaurant that would always get us a margarita to go, so we were probably breaking the law at that point. But now we're <laughs> now we're street legal, folks. So. <laughs> Fantastic answer. I'm a margarita fan myself. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it, man. Uh -huh. God bless. Have a good day. You too. Margaritas all around. Uh, nothing wrong. Cheers to that. Margarita. Wow, mm -hmm. loving it. A little heat. Yes. Uh, well,